My name is Brian Edmund. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a gas gun tractor to an electric gun tractor that will cut up to two acres of grass on a 50 cent charge. Also it will pull a trailer for about eight to ten hours on a charge. Uh, to do this I purchased a, a used garden tractor Husqvarna from a small engine repair shop for $50. Uh, this is the used gasoline powered Husqvarna tractor I bought from a local uh, small engine repair shop for $50. The engine was no good and we were really just buying the wheels and the frame uh, which is all we need. The first steps of disassembly is we remove the seats and then the hood and then we remove the engine. Then we remove the cutting deck so we can clean it up and uh, paint it a little bit. Uh, we remove the cutting arbors from the middle so we can install the electric motors in them two holes there. The final step in disassembly is we can remove all the old wiring and starter solenoids and things that were on there. We can remove springs and pulleys and linkages that were for the cutting deck and the belts as we don't need them anymore. We can remove the gas tank and the transmission at the back uh, as we don't need that. I was able to sell my old transmission out of it, which was an hydrostatic transmission. I was able to put it on uh, Kijiji and sell it. So I think I made $75 on the transaxle, which more than paid for the tractor. Now here we are at this point. We've got the, uh, we've got the battery box welded onto the frame of the tractor where we cut the old rear end off and we've bolted underneath here we've bolted the complete transaxle and drive motor unit right to the bottom of the battery box and for now we've just put the old wheels back on we may eventually buy new tires for there uh, so now that's the drive system pretty well finished at the front here we've installed a, um, a plastic battery box because it's not really that important it's just um, to stop the batteries sliding around. These batteries that I've got in here are just some old ones I'm using for testing with. But the actual box is a size big enough to get the four 12 volt 120 amp hour batteries in there. So now we've got the drive uh, unit bolted on the back, we come to the electrical wiring part. Down here we have the speed controller which is all electronic and we have the cutter motor control and then the wiring in between now then this wiring looks all complicated but what we do is we assemble it with step-by-step -step instructions uh, in the set of plans that you can get that shows all the details of how everything is put together and how to wire every wire one step at a time reference to a photograph okay so now we've got the, all the wiring installed and these four little batteries in there that are just for a test so let's just see if everything's working okay so um, we've got no seat on it yet but we can sit on here and I turn the key on which as you can see the little light comes on but there's no noise for the ignition move doggy get the dog out of the way Go on. so now I just try it oh yeah we seem to be going fine we can only move it slow in here but as you can see everything seems to be working in the reverse on this one it's mounted with a foot pedal and as you see we have variable speed tremendous control of it and as soon as you let go the brake comes on so everything seems to be working fine i'll turn it off again uh, this is the cutting deck i took off the uskabana gas tractor I bought and as you can see I cleaned it all up and I painted it and then I took all the uh, all the original cutting arbors and bearings I took them all out and threw them away we don't want them actually I sold them I didn't th throw them away I sold them I think I got fifty dollars for the two cutting arbors uh, anyway then these electric motors I've installed the two electric motors with just four volts and then underneath there, I can't lift it up right now, but underneath there is the cutter blades bolted on to the directly on the electric motor. So now we have no belts, we have no pulleys, 
We have no transmission in the back with oil in or anything else. We have no oil on the entire tractor. It's, the gearbox is packed with grease for the life of the machine. These have got sealed ball bearings in, so there's nothing to lubricate. We just have to sharpen the blades about once a year. Now, we wired the two motors together and we've used the stove cable. And the stove cable plug is connected, it, when we install this on the tractor, the stove cable plugs into the tractor. PTO, which is the power takeoff on electric tractor, is in just an electrical outlet, a 50 amp electrical outlet. And it just plugs straight into the tractor. Very easy to remove, or if you want to work on it, you just make sure you've unplugged it, and there's no danger of the blades starting up. This is ready to be installed on the tractor now. I bolted the seat onto the back deck with the fenders and everything, and I'm just installing this back onto the tractor over the battery box. Now, of course, we will have the proper batteries will be installed in there when it's uh, completed, but right now I just want to make sure everything fits properly. So we put this on, it slides on like that. There, that's it. Now then. I just have to bolt the two springs in here. Okay, we just bolt the springs down there, and that um, that gives the the seat switch something to sit on. It also cushions for the driver and it provides the seat switch which disables the tractor. Okay, this is just a cover to, for the electronics to keep any water out. So this was made out of just a thin piece of Perspex or Lexan and you warm up the corners with the electric heating element. I just warm it, the element up and I lay this on and bend it over to bend the corners. But you can do it with a heat gun or anything like that too. Anyway, this just goes down there, slides underneath there, and then I have two screws that just hold that on, and it keeps any water from splashing on the speed controller. Or the, the other wiring is not really that important, because it's only low voltage, so a little bit of water, although you don't want it on there, it won't actually harm the operation of the tractor. Okay, now this... This bar that was bolted onto the front of the tractor when I bought it was, was for, for lifting the tractor out when it got stuck because the weight of the gas engine on the front here was so heavy and no weight on the back that the tractor continually got stuck. And so they put this on so you can keep lifting the front wheels out of the mud when it got stuck. With an electric tractor, the balance of the driving wheels and the front wheels is perfectly balanced you'll very very unlikely ever get the tractor stuck uh, anyway now we're just going to put the the hood back on to complete the this part of the project and the hood is really easy to go on it just slides into two notches there like that and there's the tractor pretty well finished ready to have the cutting deck installed and of course when it's all finished it will be cleaned up and painted if you wish or just polished. Well, we're ready now to put the cutting deck on. The first thing is we just have to reinstall the wheels back on the cutting deck. Uh, this particular model they are adjustable. And we'll put the front roller back on. Okay, now we're ready to put the cutting deck on. Make sure it down the tracks are ready to put the deck on. Uh, we'll move it up the way a little bit. Okay, that should be all right there. Mine's in the...
okay that's the pins all installed now I just got to plug this in instead of the cutter being a belt drive now it's a power takeoff of an electric kind so it just plugs in like that and that's the cutter deck installed no belts no pulleys no springs the cutter deck installed okay. uh, we'll take it over to the lawn and uh, give it a test version of the tractor except for a few small things like uh, now the engine is gone and the electric motors are pretty quiet uh, things like this has become the problem now is rattling wheels which is fairly easy to fix and we'll get around to that eventually um, the other thing that you should consider uh, some of the important things when you're converting to electric one of the most important is the runtime on the batteries. We want to use the cheap batteries, lead acid batteries if we can, uh, and get the best runtime out of them possible. So, in other words, we have to have the most efficient design that we can come up with. We've got to have no belts, no pulleys, no hydraulics, no great big motor running at full speed driving hydraulic pumps all the time. We want the smallest motors possible we have the electric motor on the drive axle at the back that only runs at the speed that you need it to go it's a direct drive uh, we have the cutter motors which are really small and they only actually draw higher current when they're cutting thicker grass when they're cutting thinner grass the current is lower so these are very efficient the speed control hydraulics is just a waste of energy about 20 percent efficient we use electronic speed control which uh, is about 90% efficient, something like that, maybe 95. The battery location, the batteries are very heavy. In a, in a tractor, you want weight. A lot of garden tractors and tractors put weights on the wheels and stuff like that, and they add big steel castings and stuff. What we do is we, lower, we put the two thirds of the weight of the tractor on the back wheels, which are the driving wheels. We have the electric motor and the transmission on the back wheels. We have two of the four batteries right on the back wheels, as low as possible. And then we have the, the operator, the weight of him also on the back wheels. On the front, we have the weight of two batteries, so that this is enough so that the front wheels don't tip off the ground when you're going up a hill, towing a, tra a trailer or something. So we have, but it's enough weight on the back wheels that we don't need any extra weight and wheel weights and things like that. Safety is another thing. By keeping the batteries as low as possible, you don't want the batteries up high, up high here if you can get them. We want them as low as possible. These are fairly low, these ones are even lower. The batteries as low as possible so give it good stability on, on grades and things like that. 
as um, far as safety is concerned, uh, when you or if you fall off the tractor for some reason on a grade or something like that, as soon as you fall off the tractor, everything should shut off. The blades should stop going within a couple of sec within a couple of seconds. The tractor's drive motor should stop, and it should apply a parking brake so it doesn't roll down the hill. That's where uh, that's pretty important. The charging. The charger should be an automatic feature, an automatic charger that's designed that it can't damage the batteries so that the batteries will last probably seven years. This particular tractor on these batteries uh, will, will cut up to two acres of grass on a charge which costs about 50 cents. We spent many weeks designing and perfecting this tractor so for anybody who's interested uh, and wants to build it, we sell a set of plans and step-by-step -step instructions on our website, electrictractor.net.